Good morning. Welcome to worship service here in person and online this morning. We have a number of announcements, but first, for our prayer concerns, uh, Phil Minorich is going to have sh shoulder surgery on Tuesday. I just spoke with him yesterday, and everything is good to go. So please keep him in your prayers for Tuesday and then for uh, his recovery time, which will be about six weeks. So with that, I'm going to turn over to Pastor Jenna because she has a couple of announcements for us. Good morning. Uh, our first announcement is today after our worship service, um, first of all, we have our budget meeting. So if you would uh, like to go to that, please do so. Um, but on the, one of the um, high top circle tables, we have some cards and stamps and address labels. And I would love for you to take a card or take some time after the service or after the meeting uh, to write out a Valentine for some of our homebound uh, members or members that haven't really been coming because of COVID. Uh, we'd, we'd love for you to do that. During Sunday school, our youth will be um, making Valentines for the residents over at our house here in Austin. And we thought maybe this year uh, we can have all of you uh, reach out to someone in our congregation that hasn't been here for a while and has been reaching, uh, watching online. So please uh, everything's out there for you, the card, the stamp, and the address label. All you have to do is grab one, write one, and put it in the mail. So feel free to either do that here or take it with you and write it at your leisure the next couple weeks. The other thing I wanted to announce is next Saturday is the Good Earth Village Snow, uh, snow Day. So please, uh, if you would love to come to that, uh, join in and bring some outdoor snow activities. Uh, a game if you'd rather stay inside and play games. Uh, there's going to be a chili cook-off, and you don't have to do anything other than bring chili if you'd like to participate in that. Um, it's going to be, uh, they're going to be there all day, so please uh, come and have an incredible time out in the snow at Good Earth Village next Saturday all day. Thank you, Pastor Jenna. Yeah, so today, as she mentioned, after worship, we will meet in Knutson Hall for those who'd like to go over the review of the 2022 ministry budget. Uh, we will have annual reports for you there, but also if you cannot stay for that, uh, you will be getting your annual reports, of course, uh, via email this week if you have email, but we also will have some paper copies for you to take home today if you choose to do those as well. <coughs> Then just a reminder, once again, next Sunday, we only have one worship service. It will be at 8.45 a.m. Then at 10 a.m., after we have uh, just a brief time after the, after the worship service, we will have uh, one more hybrid annual meeting. It would be nice to say that this will be the last time that we'll have to do that, but, <coughs> excuse me, but it will work this way just like it did the last couple of times that those who are in person, like I said, you'll take a break, we'll come back in. You can go ahead and get some coffee, et cetera, come in. And then what we'll do is Krista will have people online via Zoom and they will be checking in uh, after we complete our worship service and getting ready for that 10 o'clock time period. So there, the, the link is going to be available. So please take note of that if you cannot be here in person. So just remember, only one service next Sunday. And with that, let's go ahead and continue our worship service this morning with our confession and forgiveness this day. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. 
Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are the descendants of the Most High, adopted in the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. I invite those able to please rise at this time as we sing our song. <laughs>
Well, I know we're all getting tired of wearing these masks, but I will say at least in the wintertime, it's handy to have them when you have a cough or when it's 10 below zero. So finally something useful for them. Let us pray today our prayer of the day together. Most holy God, the earth is filled with your glory, and before you angels and saints stand in awe. In our vision to see your power at work in the world, <clears throat> and by your grace, make us heralds of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated as Joyful Noise sing our song this morning. First reading by Isaiah 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, 
Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, and the whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord say, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this dull people and stop their ears and shut their eyes so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. Then I said, how long, O Lord? And he said, until cities lie waste without inhabitant and houses without people, and the land is utterly desolate, until the Lord sends everyone far away and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. Word of God, word of life. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 5. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of the Genesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had got one of them, gone out of them, and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, and one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let your nets for a catch. Simon said, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of Christ. You may be seated. When I read through the scripture passages for this week, one short phrase from the Isaiah text grabbed me by the heart and wouldn't let go. How long, O oh Lord? Coincidentally, a year ago, I was repeating this very question over and over again. 
It's hard to believe that it's only been a year since Mike and I were anxiously waiting by our phones, hoping to read or hear news about the birth of our surprise second child. We had been told on January 21st in a life-changing phone call that Kaylee's birth parents were expecting another baby and were wondering if we would also adopt this baby, being the biological sibling of our daughter. After the initial shock wore off, Mike and I both quickly agreed that yes, this was indeed happening. What followed was, in hindsight, a lightning fast adoption process, faster than I could have ever imagined something like that going. But back then, especially in the midst of a pandemic, it felt like everything was going in slow motion. The call about Spencer came on a Thursday with the weekend fast approaching when most of the people we would need to get a hold of to get this process rolling would be off for the weekend. We didn't know whether the baby was a boy or a girl, so we couldn't settle on a name right away either. A cousin of mine both had a gut feeling it was a boy though. We've established before that I'm not a patient person when it comes to stuff like this, right? The adoption process is not made for impatient people. So I struggled with waiting for answers, with emails containing endless attachments of paperwork to fill out. And then we found out that they weren't doing fingerprints here in Austin during the pandemic, which we needed for the background check. That did not make me happy, and I jokingly asked Mike whether I needed to go commit a nonviolent petty crime to get myself uh, arrested just to fast track the fingerprinting process. It didn't come to that in case you were wondering. <laughs> Luckily, the captain of the police department had us come in and personally fingerprinted us so that we could get those submitted and get them submitted for the background check process, which we were told was again delayed because of COVID. I was so sick of hearing that phrase. I remembered thinking, how long, oh Lord, will this process take? Finally, our background checks cleared, and all that was left was for the baby to be born and for us to travel down to Florida to meet him and take placements. On February 8th, we got word that Spencer was born and that the birth mom still needed to sign consent forms for the adoption. Unfortunately, that didn't happen as quickly as we had liked either. I remember thinking, how long, oh Lord, until we get to meet our precious baby boy? It wasn't until February 22nd that we officially got word that we could begin our travel down to Florida. We picked up my cousin who came with us to be our photographer and videographer when we met Spencer for the first time and we left on a Monday evening, taking turns driving uh, straight through to Florida. I don't think my refrains of how long, oh Lord, till we get there were too annoying. We arrived at the adoption law firm mid-afternoon on Tuesday to sign paperwork. We then went to the house that we were graciously invited to stay in next door to an ELCA church. The house itself was used for refugee families coming to the states until they could find more permanent housing. It was currently empty and volunteers from the congregation had come over to clean for us before we had arrived. We met them, dropped off our stuff, got settled and arranged to go meet our son who was staying one last night with his foster mom so that we could get one last night of uninterrupted sleep. Then the countdown began. Because this was an interstate adoption, we also had to wait for a process called the Interstate Pet Compact for the Placement of Children, or ICPC. The state of Florida had to review the adoption paperwork, send it to Minnesota for approval, and then send it back to Florida before we could legally leave the state with Spencer. How long, O oh Lord, until we can finally take our child home? Finally, on March 10th, a full 15 days after we arrived in Florida, with a couple of beach visits while we could, we received word that the paperwork was cleared and we could finally travel home. 
The journey this time took a little longer as we were traveling with an infant who needed frequent stops to stretch, wiggle, eat, and diaper changes. Spencer turns one year old on Tuesday, and we're both amazed and grateful that amid all of our how long, O oh Lord, refrains, we got through the process with more love and bigger hearts than we thought ever possible. But for how many of us and how many times and for other circumstances has the phrase, how long, O oh Lord, been uttered by us these last few years? I ask this very question on Facebook, and some of the responses are as follows. How long, O oh Lord, will this pandemic last? A colleague of mine asked, how long, O oh Lord, until I find a new call that will make my soul happy and my heart take wing? Another friend asked, how long, O oh Lord, until we start caring as much for others as we do ourselves? And another, how long, O oh Lord, until we realize that there is more that unites us than divides us? These last two, the ones about caring for others and being united, are of particular importance because both correlate with the gospel lesson regarding our call as Jesus' followers. Both the Isaiah text and the gospel text talk about being called. Isaiah, as a prophet to speak to God's people who would not listen or take God's warning. And Jesus' disciples, who follow him in ministry and try to share and emulate his teachings of radical love and inclusion. Another call story I'd like to share uh, contains a story about the image on this candle, which I recently received as a gift. It has an image of Jorena Lee, who lived from 1783 to 1855 and was the first authorized female preacher of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Since this is also Black History Month, I wanted to share Pastor Lee's story, which was included with this candle. In 1807, Jorena Lee heard the voice of God commissioning her to preach the gospel. Initially, she was reluctant to follow or pursue ministry, given the male-dominated nature of the church. However, she decided to confide in Bishop Allen and reveal to him her call to preach. Allen told Lee that he could not grant her permission to preach because he was required to uphold the AME church's ban against female ministers. In 1819, during a worship service at Bethel Church, a guest preacher began struggling with his message and abruptly stopped preaching. As he stared at the congregation for, with the loss for words, Lee sprang to her feet and began preaching, picking up where the minister had left off. After Lee's sermon, she was afraid that Bishop Allen would punish her for preaching without permission, but on the contrary, Allen was so impressed by Lee that he officially gave her authorization to preach the gospel. Allen asserted that God had called Lee to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Shortly thereafter, Lee began to travel to various cities for preaching engage engagements and was highly praised for her powerful sermons. Now, Lee was lucky. Women in our particular Lutheran tradition have only just recently celebrated 50 years of ordained ministry, 40 years for women of color. How many women and women of color wondered, how long, O oh Lord, until I can share your word? It was far too long, that much I know. Being called followers of Jesus can be difficult in the world we live in today. We, might, we may find ourselves asking, like Isaiah, how long, O oh Lord, if ever, will it take for your people to listen, comprehend, see, and understand, let alone live by the message of your unending love? That question was asked in the book of joy that a group of members here at OSLC are currently studying. The question was, how do I find joy in the midst of such large, large world problems? 
Archbishop Desmond Tutu's response was, you show your humanity by how you see yourself, not as apart from others, but from your connection to others. Hope is the antidote to despair. Despair turns us inwards. Hope sends us into the arms of others. When Jesus tells his disciples that they were going to fish for people, this is what he was talking about. Connection with others. And the reason they listened to him and cast down their nets, even though they had just had a night of no fish in those nets, they had hope in Jesus. So they cast down their nets and were given an abundance. That's what Jesus does for us gives us an abundance of love, of hope, of grace. When we find ourselves asking, how long, O Lord, in this world, may we recall Jesus' words from the gospel lesson today. Do not be afraid. We are called to connection through Christ. So, people of God, cast down your nets. Fish for people. Find a connection, show your humanity, and feel God's love. For how long? Always. Amen.
Please join with me. We believe in God, who came to this earth as a child, was born to unmarried teenage parents, <clears throat> and was quickly made a refugee. We believe that this child grew up to heal the sick, see the poor, dine with outcasts, welcome foreigners, wash the feet of sinners, offer second chances, and bless the children. And so we believe that Christmas is only the beginning the dream does not end with a manger. The dream ends with God's promised day. So until all God's children are home, we will follow the Magi's lead. Walking, seeking, and looking up. May it be so, for this we believe. Amen. The prayers of the church. The spirit of the Lord is poured up, out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. <clears throat> Equip your church to proclaim the good news that we have first received, the forgiveness and grace shown to us through Jesus Christ. Send us out as apostles, sharing the hope of your salvation with a waiting world. God of grace. Holy are you, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Reveal your splendor in fiery sunsets, and in deep blue twilights. Teach us to recognize you in the beauty of our natural world, God of grace. Soften the hearts of rulers and governments that they perceive and tend to the needs of their people. Remove corruption and the impulse towards violence. Protect first responders and military personnel who risk their lives in service of others, God of grace. Your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon those who look to you for hope and healing. Bless doctors, nurses, social workers, workers, hospital staff, therapists, and all caregivers. Draw near to those who are scared, sick, or in pain, especially Phil Meinrich for his upcoming sh shoulder surgery, and those we name in our hearts. God of grace. The disciples received help from partners as they brought in an abundant catch of fish. So strengthen this congregation's partnerships with community organizations and ministries. Multiply our shared efforts and bring joy to our relationships. God of grace. We give you thanks for our ancestors in faith who boldly answered your call. By their example, give us courage to live in faith and to proclaim your mercy until the day that you gather us into your glory, God of grace. Since we have such great hope in your promises, God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share a sign of God's peace with one another.
Most high and holy God, pour out upon us your one and unifying spirit and awaken in every confession of the whole church a holy hunger and thirst for unity in you, through Christ Jesus, our Messiah, Savior, and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, one mother of us all, you have brought us this far along the way. In the night which is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we pray that Jesus shall free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Let the church say amen. amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, and all are welcome. The body of Christ, given for you. The blood of Christ, shed for you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen your journey of faith. Amen.
we pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news to, the, to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forevermore. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. 